you know, we talk to folks a lot and what we hear is the top three issues are talent, talent, and talent. North Carolina has uh, a great opportunity here. We're growing, we're attracting business, we have good balanced policies, uh, but we have more jobs than we do people. So the question is, is how do we create and align our education and talent supply and workforce systems to not only train our young people for these jobs, but how do we address the adult learner community? How do we look at veterans and spouses of veterans? And uh, what do we do with second chance hiring? And how do we, all the folks that through the pandemic have reassessed and now are, are coming back in, how do we get them trained, educated for the jobs of today and tomorrow? So number one is talent. And then a competitive business climate. Uh, we're doing really well here, so preserve and protect. Um, the tax the tax climate that we have, uh, all those things that go into the cost of a job, our balanced regulatory environment. Uh, we're you know watching very closely on the regulatory side, the regional gas initiative, uh, greenhouse gas initiative, and the new executive order the governor put out about uh, light duty and heavy duty trucks. Uh, great innovation going on there. We think innovation does best when it has limited government regulation around it. So we're watching those really carefully. Uh, you know, we're, you know, we're coming off a, a, a you know, three-year unprecedented event in healthcare, and, you know, the pandemic, uh, you know, really, I, I think, provided the a unprecedented amount of stress and, you know, and, and just pure volume and work um, within the healthcare field. So folks that had thought about retiring, I, I tell you, halfway through the pandemic, you know, they decided that it was time to go. So. You know, one of the great things about North Carolina is we're becoming a destination for business and industry. We're becoming a destination for people who are choosing North Carolina to retire. Uh, and, and they choose North Carolina because we've got good education. We've got a good business community and a good business environment. We also have good health care. Um, so, you know, our top priority is one, uh, making sure that we have a, a way to, to recruit and retain the best talent. Um, some of that is creating a workforce environment uh, that's safe and healthy. Uh, right now, healthcare organizations have the highest incidence of workplace violence uh, than any other business, minus the prison system. And most of those are providing healthcare. healthcare. So the healthcare space right now, um, you know, creating a safe space where people can do their best work, uh, really important. It is a huge one. And I'd like to point out that um, on November 8th, a little known fact is that voters approved every referendum for construction on the statewide ballots. Like $4.7 billion total mm -hmm. um, and about uh, eight, almost $884 million here in Wake County. Mm -hmm. Whereas for roadways, transportation, community colleges, public schools, parks, greenways, and Everybody wants to live in North Carolina and South Carolina, and you can drive anywhere. There are power cranes galore. There are orange traffic cones and the work zones all over the place, and utility work is on fire, and it's a great place to be. And I want to commend the legislature for approving billions of dollars for infrastructure funding, for transportation, building utility needs, but we need to keep the drive alive. And as, as, as Gary said very eloquently, we need to have a long-term solution for transportation. You know, the, the hospitality industry uh, took a big hit during, during the pandemic, like so many other industries. And, and thankfully, things are, are returning to normal, but the kind of challenges that we face, you know, you can boil it down to workforce, uh, fuel prices, and supply chain. And those, those are the things that keep us awake at night. Uh, we're having trouble hiring CDL drivers and retaining CDL drivers in a highly competitive uh, situation where you, you've got logistic companies like Amazon and others that are hiring them up. Uh, and then, you know, we have uh, record prices right now for diesel, which is uh, another big challenge. But lo looking at the, at the legislative session, where I think I'm probably gonna be, we're gonna be spending the bulk of our time. We work very closely with Representative, soon to be Senator Tim Moffat, who has uh, uh, been very active in a positive way towards trying to modernize the alcohol and liquor system in the state and, and doing it in a responsible way. 
to make things more efficient. Uh, we had uh, three bills that were passed in the, in the last session, two of them were omnibus bills, where there were 40 different changes made to, to the alcohol laws. And I, I would expect that there's going to be you know, one or more omnibus bills in the next uh, two-year biennium. The refrain of, you know, not being able to get people to take jobs is... Yeah. is yeah, the vacancy every, rates in a lot of state agencies are just insane right now. In some prisons, it's well over 50%. But take prisons aside, because, yeah. you know, they're, they're obviously more difficult. Although, I got to tell you, there are some prisons with a sonic down the road where you can make the same or better money, so why would you put your life on the line? Not that the work at Sonic is easy, it's just Plus not dangerous. as deadly. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, so obviously those, those vacancies, the overall vacancy rate is around 20%. That affects not only the rest of the state employees who are supposed to do the job, it affects every taxpayer, they're paying their taxes, they're getting 20% less services. And it affects business. Because you know, we were talking about how right now there's more jobs than we have people. That will turn on its head if we don't have an infrastructure that's strong. Then even if we get businesses here, we will lose them. We've all been lobbying long enough to see businesses come because of some shiny thing and leave um, once they've taken advantage of that. The banking industry in North Carolina is really the backbone of our economy. We're the engine that fuels the economy, and we only do as well. Our banks only do as well as the local economies and the broader North Carolina economy. So it behooves us to be shoulder to shoulder with our friends at the chamber. We stand shoulder to shoulder on these larger economic issues and public policy issues with the chamber, and so many bankers are involved in their work. Uh, What's interesting about North Carolina is a banking state. We're one of the major banking states in the country. Charlotte is the second largest banking center in the country. So we are very involved at the national level. Most banking policy is affected at the national level in Congress and in the regulatory agencies. But in our state legislature, we have to take care of business on what we refer to as technical bills. Those are things that you won't read about, no one really wants to talk about, but they're really important to bankers and to bank consumers uh, customers because our banking laws have to keep up with uh, changes in the economy, changes in business practices, in innovations, in uh, how customers want to work with banks.